Hey, howdy, hey, what is going on, you guys? It is your boy, Pyrotoad, here. We're actually wandering around my local plant garden, as you can see, with all the plants behind me. We are trying to find a few different plants for my corn snake. More specifically, we're gonna be doing a bioactive corn snake setup. This is a video some of you guys have been requesting, and my bioactive ball python video that'll be popping up right here has done absolutely fantastic. It's at like 2,000 something views right about now. I don't remember exactly. So I figured, why not do a 40 gallon bioactive corn corn snake setup, get some plants, and make a dope setup. So that's what we're doing. We're looking for some plants, and I guess I'll catch y'all here in a second. So I found some more plants that I really like. Like some of these ferns, I always love using ferns in my setups. Now, I'm not sure if that's the look we're going for in today's video. We may be going for a more native wildflower type look. I know that's different than what you guys are used to, but corn snakes aren't exactly tropical snakes. Snakes, as I said, aren't really tropical snakes. Now, they're not super dry snakes either. They have a very unique care, and honestly, a lot of different plants will work for a corn snake. You could do tropical plants, you could do certain types of flowering plants. The biggest issue is you have to make sure they're not gonna be poisonous or harmful in any way, shape, or form for the snake. Even if I don't do a tropical plant, like something over here, I could try some of these more vining plants. Now, once again, these kind of have a decent look to them. I'm not too sure though. There's so many plants that I could decide from. So I'm gonna take my time and look around and gather plants as I go. Alrighty y'all, so I found plant number one and it's gonna be this fern right here. I don't know, I just like the look. I think it'll fit really nicely in Fuego's enclosure as well. And it's huge. This thing is really full um, and it looks really good as well. So that's gonna be plant number one. Well y'all, I picked out two more plants as you can see. Now I plan on putting these around Fuego's water bowl, if that makes any sense because they have a sort of they have a sort of swamp looking plant vibe. I don't know. I just like the way they look. I think they'll look good around Fuego's uh, water bowl as well. So we got these two plants, this one big one. And I think we're still shopping, but we're probably almost done. Well, y'all, I've gotten all the plants that I'm going to be getting for our corn snake, which I'll show you when we get home. But that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I need from this greenhouse place, I guess you could say. So I will catch you when we are on our way or when we are at home. Well y'all, we are home with our plants as you can see. Now what we need to get done next is start stripping out this enclosure. We gotta take Fuego, our little corn snake. Hey buddy, what are you doing homie? What are you doing? You're upside down bro. We're gonna take Fuego out with our little snake hook, put him in this tub, and set him to the side. Once we get him out, then we're gonna take everything out of this enclosure, clean it off, and basically get it empty so that we can set it up. Alright Fuego, don't, don't try to kill me today please bro. Yo chill, yo chill out, chill out homie. Chill out, bro. Chill out. Calm down, homie. Calm down. Yo, what's good, bro? Come on, buddy. Come on, Fuego. Come on, big boy. This dude is getting huge for a male corn snake. There he goes. Let's set him right into the tub here. Go, buddy. Now stay. Stay right there. Stay right there. Good job. Good job. Thank you for working with me, sir. We're just going to set him off to the side here. And now I'm just going to work on clearing everything out. Well, as you can see, Fuego's tank is all cleared out, all the decorations are out, and it is ready to get set up. Then if we pan along this way, all of his decorations are out, of course. And then right over here, our little buddy Fuego is all snuggled in his towel, so we're going to leave him be. He's just going to chill here for the next few hours, and then once his cage is done, he'll obviously go back in it. But don't worry, he'll be just fine sitting in that tub for a few hours. And then as soon as this cage is done, obviously, he'll have a brand new home. My boy Fuego, along with many of my other animals in the reptile room, is going to have a brand new bioactive setup. A lot of you guys love it when I build bioactive setups. And I'm excited to build a corn snake setup. Because I'm going to do it a little bit differently than my other tropical bioactive setups. Just a little bit, not too much. But without further ado, let's start setting this cage up. So the first main ingredient of this cage that we're going to be using is this waterfall foam sealant stuff. Now this is basically what I use for the background on 90% of my cages in the reptile room. As a matter of fact, I've got two cans here, which is about the amount you'll be needing for a 40 gallon enclosure like this one. Then after that, you're going to want various pieces of wood. In my case scenario, I'm going to be using a bunch of cork rounds and some of these larger flats as well. But I personally really like cork. It just has a really nice branchy vibe. It also doesn't mold or rot very easily like other wood types. You can also use other wood and other types of branches, but in today's video, I'm gonna be using cork. 
You may also want some latex gloves just to help keep your hands from getting dirty or anything like that. And if you get this spray foam on your fingers, I can assure you it's not going to come off for a very long time. So that is why I'm going to be putting some gloves on my hands just to keep from making a mess of my hands. The last ingredient that you're going to need is going to be dirt. Now I like to use Zilla Jungle Mix right here. You can also use Eco Earth and a few other types. And to be honest, Eco Earth sometimes works better than the Jungle Mix, but at this case scenario, I only have Jungle Mix on hand. So we're going to use Jungle Mix as basically the main texture for the background. So as of now, these three things right here, your dirt, your cork, and your foam, doesn't seem like much, but I promise you here in the next few hours, this cage is gonna be completely different. So without further ado, let's start building the background on this 40 gallon enclosure. Step one is going to be applying the cork where you think looks best. We've got a bunch of different options and places we can put all these different branches of cork. But what I do is I just take my time laying out the cork where I think looks best and just kind of brainstorming different ideas. So we're just kind of playing along with the cork, seeing what looks best. If you don't like a piece, you can always take it out still. We're not to the foaming part yet. So you still got options to remove things and add things. We're just gonna place cork all around the enclosure here let's see what do we like best see that looks pretty nice I'm not sure if I want to keep that there though let's see that looks decent just like so it's definitely been a few minutes later and this is the progress we have made so far so we got some rocks in there we got a whole bunch of branches now it's time to start foaming so this is basically step two and that's gonna be to foam the enclosure now for a lot of people this part can be kind of difficult kind of tedious just because you've got permanent foam that once it touches that glass it's not coming off so if you mess up then you either have to figure out a way to fix your mess up or you deal with it. Now I've built over 100 cages easily with the foam backgrounds like so. So it's pretty easy for me. But if it's your first time building an enclosure like this, just take your time, work slowly, and trust me, it'll look good once you're patient with it. So once again, now that we've gotten the cork and everything like that ready, it is time to start opening up your cans of foam. Now I always recommend keeping these lids because you can always use them as little planters in and around the background. Then of course you'll put your straw on your foam, shake up the can really really well, and get ready to start foaming. Well y'all, without further ado, it's time to start foaming. We're going to start from the bottom right here and we're basically just going to work our way up. Now obviously you won't see the entire cage get foamed just because it's out of frame, but you guys kind of get the idea and I'm going to show you what I mean right now. So here we go, we're starting from the bottom. There goes the foam, super duper satisfying as you can see. Don't be shy, don't be afraid to use a decent amount for the background. We're going to start going under these rocks and whatnot just a little bit. We're going to go this way here. Now once your foam is all said and done, you have to hurry before it can completely dry and add dirt all across it. I'll explain why and I'll explain more in depth in a minute. We got our handful of jungle mix here and we're just going to sprinkle it right across. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just a good thin layer right across the foam. Well now our dirt is across the top of the foam as you can see and basically the next main step is to let this tank sit and dry for a few hours. Obviously you want to make sure this foam is completely dry before you set your cage up otherwise you risk the background falling over. Then once it does dry we will flip it over and start setting it up. Now the reason why I add dirt now is because the foam is still wet so you can add some dirt and a lot of the dirt will actually stick. A lot of people wait for the foam to dry then carve it then add dirt but what I do is I wait for the foam to, to dry with the dirt on it and then once it's dried then I will go back into the shiny patches and carve just the shiny patches. So instead of having to carve all the foam on the enclosure, it basically makes it to where only certain patches need to be carved and siliconed and the rest of the enclosure is good to go. Hopefully that made sense. I don't know if I sounded like I was mumbling or if that made sense. Let me know if I did down in the comments. But I guess without further ado, I'll catch y'all here in a few hours once this cage has completely dried.
Well, y'all, it is now indeed the next morning, and this cage has had a good amount of time to dry. So what we're going to start working on next is flipping it up back towards us and seeing if we need to silicone it and seeing if we need to shop vac any dirt out. So let's go ahead and flip this cage up here. We'll close the door. Oh, crap. We'll do that, and then here we go. Flip it up, flip it up. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're good. Some dirt fell, which is fine. That's normal. The background is still standing. Well, y'all, would y'all look at that. The background is really coming together. It looks really, really good, as a matter of fact. There's only a few squishy parts like that right there, or some of those parts right there that stick out a little bit more that will need a silicone. But for the most part, most of the foam looks pretty good. Then, of course, there's all this dirt on the rocks and on the floor here that we're going to have to shop vac out. But before we do any shop vacuuming, let's go ahead and get our knife and our silicone and start carving the foam background. So all we're going to do is just start carving at the foam, cutting it away, just to give it a little bit more of a flat texture. You can kind of see how it looks versus this squishy stuff here. So we'll go ahead, start cutting through, boom, and then all the pieces, of course, you'll just discard in, in the trash can or wherever else is necessary. For example, this part right here, all this background stuff, we're just going to go ahead and carve across the top, just like so. And we're just going to keep carving and keep carving and keep carving until the background is completely textured how we like. Now for the process of using our silicone here. Now this is another tedious process for beginners when they're building cages like these. Now this is the silicone I use. Take a screenshot if you need to or whatever. It's 100% waterproof, 100% silicone. Number two, and it's brown. I like the brown just because it looks better. I mean, just things like that. But this is the silicone I use. And what we're gonna do is start siliconing all this foam background. Now let me show you how to properly silicone because some videos aren't very proper on the way they do it. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna smear a whole bunch, just like so. It's gonna be globs. But we'll get rid of those globs here shortly. Just get globs all over this foam. It doesn't matter where as long as it doesn't get on your cage, obviously. But you want globs of silicone all over the place. Just like so. Just like you're putting on toothpaste or something. Once you've gotten your globs of silicone just like so, you're not going to leave them there. You're going to smear them with your gloves. Now make sure you are wearing gloves for this part. Otherwise you will have silicone stuck on your fingers for the rest of eternity. And you're literally just going to smear it. You don't want any rough edges or bald spots. You don't want any globs to be stuck there as well because sometimes it'll look weird. And you just want to smear it all the way around just like so. Get an even brown coat of silicone. You're going to have it all over your gloves. It's going to look like you just dug in your butt. But you didn't. You're building a cage for a corn snake. Right, Christian? Yeah, I think so. Hope so. You're just going to keep smearing it all the way around. Try not to get it all over your cage, obviously, because silicone can be annoying. Some does get on it. Once it dries, all you have to do is just peel it off. And just like so, now that you have your silicone smeared across the back, you want to work quickly like you did with the foam and scoop up a bunch of dirt and throw it on the silicone. So we got a handful of dirt. What we're going to do is just pat it. Boom. Just like so. You can already see how much stuck. Some will still fall off, but a lot will stick. And you're just going to keep repeating that process till all the silicone is covered with dirt. And just like so, all the silicone has been patted down with dirt on top. So now, same thing with the foam. We have to let this tank rest for a few more hours so that the silicone can properly dry. Start on other things, and I guess we will wait, and I'll catch y'all here in a few hours once this cage is dried, once the silicone is dry, and we are ready to start setting it up. Well, just like so, it has been a couple of hours, the silicone is dried, the cage is ready to be set up, and it's on the shelf. The first thing we really need to get done is add our substrate. Now, with our substrate, it'll be just dirt. There will not be a drainage layer. Reason why is because being that it's a corn snake, a drainage layer won't be that big of an issue. And for some reason, if you have a drainage layer with water on the bottom against a heat pad, there's a high chance of the cage shattering. I don't know how it works. It just has to do with the tension between the water and the heat. So, with that being said, there will be no drainage layer. But our bioactive ball python setup that Houdini is in has no drainage layer. And as you can see, the dirt and everything like that is just fine. 
So yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and snap our fingers and see if we can get the dirt in the enclosure. All right, here we go. Whoa. Well, the dirt is now in the enclosure. So I think the first thing that we're gonna begin doing to this enclosure is adding some live oak leaves. As you can see, I used multiple handfuls, multiple scoops of live oak leaves because the live oak leaves really help add that forest floor, I guess you could kind of say vibe to the enclosure. So definitely use lots of leaves. Next, what we're gonna begin doing is adding some magnolia leaves. Now I try to use multiple different types of foliage for the bottom mainly because it kind of changes the texture. If you have small leaves with large leaves, it kind of just adds a more 3D effect and feel if that makes any sense. So definitely try to add multiple different types of dried leaves. Next, what we're gonna start to do is add Fuego's hide. So this will be his warm hide and basically his main hide. Of course, corn snakes require a minimum of one hide. You can always add more if you so choose to do so. So we are adding this one hide right here, putting some leaves and some dirt inside of the hide just to kind of add to that naturalistic vibe. Then we're gonna backfill the hide. As you can see, we're just taking scoops of dirt and just stuffing it in the back of the hide to kind of make it blend in more with the ground. We're just gonna keep on repeating and scooping a bunch of this dirt here to create a whole new shelf layer. So now you'll have multiple areas that you can that you can scoop dirt and plant off of and all sorts of other things. So I have this tub of isopods and spring gels here and basically all I'm going to do is just dump it into the enclosure. I've had this tub for quite a while now, it's pretty well established and I don't really need it for any other personal needs at the reptile room here. So I figured why not let it go to waste, let me just dump the whole tub into this enclosure. And boom, just like so, all of the dirt and isopods and whatnot are dumped into the enclosure. So these guys will hopefully do really, really well inside of their new little setup. Now being that I'm dumping an entire tub full, there's probably several hundred isopods. So basically they're just going to kind of scatter about, run around and do their own little thing. And as you can see, I'm just mixing it up so that the enclosure gets a good even mixture. So next what we're going to do is we're going to add Fuego's water bowl here. As you can see, we're just kind of putting it in the corner, digging out the area as well. And we're just kind of figuring out where it fits best, where it looks best. Now personally with corn snakes, I recommend enough room for them to be able to completely soak. Next we're going to add two of these swamp looking plants. These plants look really cool and being that corn snakes can be found in places that have swamps, they kind of look like swamp plants, so I think they'll work really well around his water bowl. And then we'll add more plants from there. Next, we're going to go ahead and plant this beautiful blue star fern. This thing is absolutely gorgeous and will make a great centerpiece for this setup. Next, we're going to go ahead and add two of these beautiful polka dot plants. So we're going to do one on either side of the fern, as you can see. They're really nice looking plants and they'll kind of add some more vibrance and color to the enclosure. Next, we're going to go ahead and add a whole bunch of sheet moss. Now, I can never get enough of it in my enclosure and it really helps add to the texture and the vibrance and color of the background on the enclosure. So definitely recommend using sheet moss if you're building a bioactive setup like this. And voila, just like that, the enclosure is done. Now it looks fantastic. I am so very impressed with how this enclosure turned out, and I think Fuego, our corn snake, will absolutely love it. With the use of our beautiful ferns and our more swamp-like plants for his water bowl area, it really helps bring it all together. Now let's go ahead and see what Fuego, the corn snake, thinks of his new setup. We'll drop him in just like so and let him explore.
just like so, Fuego's cage is now done. I'm really proud with how it turned out and I think he'll enjoy it too. Now remember to like this video, subscribe, and let me know if y'all enjoyed down in the comments. And oh, one more thing. You can also follow my Instagram, TheRealPirateToadYT, if you want sneak peek updates on future videos. But with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know if I should do more videos like this down in the comments. And with all that being said, I will see you all in the next one. Peace.